þungur hnífur. Þessi hnífur á að vera þungur. Jean, Madame, est-ce que je pourrais prendre le métier de ma tante? Tu peux pas prendre le métier d'un de tes parents? Je vois jamais mon père. Et ma mère est morte. Tu sais, Hubert, si jamais ça va vraiment mal à la maison, tu peux venir euh, habiter ici les fins de semaine. Il me disait tout quand il était petit. Maintenant, je ne peux même plus ouvrir la bouche. Ça que si, ça que ça, si jamais correct, il y a toujours quelque chose. Je pense que je suis faite pour pas avoir de mère. Peut-être que ta mère est faite pour pas avoir de fils. J'imagine que, aux yeux des gens, Ailleurs sa mère, c'est un péché. Ils sont hypocrites quand même. Eux aussi, ils ont aillé leur mère, c'est sûr. Ça a peut-être duré une seconde, ça a peut-être duré un an. Peut-être que ça dure plus, peut-être que ça a été oublié, mais ils l'ont quand même fait. Tu intègres un pensionnat dans une semaine. Tu as besoin d'être encadré, Hubert. Puis d'ailleurs, ta mère. Ma mère est plus capable de me supporter, c'est ça Hubert, c'est pas ça. C'est quoi d'abord J'ai tué la mort, moi, dans la crise Je t'ai the grand narcissist here? Is it Cindy or Casey? Well, I think we're obviously seeing Casey show a lot of signs of entitlement and narcissism. But again, going back to family dynamics and what is maternal narcissism? It's when, and it's a generational thing that gets passed down. That's why we have to look back and see where, mm -hmm. where would something like this come from? And, I mean, maternal narcissism is about a mom who doesn't have empathy and who can't tune into the emotional world of her children. And it comes out in engulfing or ignoring mothers. And so, hypothetically, in a case like this, if we have a very engulfing mother who completely controls every move the child makes, and can do that while the child's little so everything looks fine and then the child hits adolescence and the train wreck begins because mother can no longer control then hypothetically we bring along a new baby or smother mother is another word to put it um, take switches all of that attention to the baby then there can be a jealousy there that happens and the first daughter who is feeling very entitled because of all this engulfing can be jealous then of that positive attention that goes on the baby and i think that can create a problem in that mother baby bond so and again and I'm, I'm glad you made the point again this is hypothetical as we look at this case many have wondered what is going on in the family dynamic here you look at the anthony's they could be living next to any of us in suburbia so we we do take that next step of wondering what what had gone on here so you're you, you again hypothetically though there's a disconnect between casey bonding with little kaylee possibly again hypothetically right Right. I mean, if uh, the if if a, if a young person at 25 years old is capable of harming a child, um, something had to go wrong for that young person. I mean, these things don't people aren't born this way. Right. Um. And so my point is really we have to look at the the family dynamics. And I, I've noticed narcissism is being thrown around a lot right. in this case. And I. I think that maternal narcissism is not well understood in, in our, our society yet or even in the mental health field and how it's generationally passed down and what it looks like. No, and so it's important, I think, for us to look back at where would something like this come from? And, and you're absolutely right in the sense when we look at this case, certainly there's the crime level of it and that's what we'll be going over day after day but there's also the level that we can learn from this and i think that's where you're going with this so uh... carol appreciate your time again carol mcbride author of the book will i ever be good enough healing the daughters of narcissistic mothers you don't
don't tell me where they are hiding, then I have no choice but to shoot you and your cat. Do you have any last requests? I was just... Well, we're talking about zero tolerance for kids making mistakes. So if we take away bully language and we say, well, that kid isn't a bully, that kid, that, that kid is somebody who's made a mistake. That kid is somebody who hasn't learned a lesson yet. But the way we're going to try and make them learn it is, is come down so hard and so emphatically that we're going to have a law against what they do. Again, I'm not saying they shouldn't have consequences, but these laws often reach down to a child of age six, five. I mean, it's incredible. And so we're now trying to mediate problems in childhood through a legislative response. Zadaz, Zadaz speaks to you. His chosen ones, the gun is good. Soy Dippy y él es mi hermano Tapi. Yo estoy aquí por robar un examen. ¿Tú? Yo, por decirle que lo robe. Pues no tiene tan mala pinta, ¿a que no? No. Internos firmes. Soy el director del Centro Reeducacional Esperanza. Aquí van a recibir el regalo más preciado de toda su vida: la madurez. Bienvenidos. Este es el plan. A partir de ahora, sabotaje la esperanza. Somos el Club de la Canica. ¡Por el Club de la Canica! Hoy toca hacer algo diferente. Hay que resolver un misterio. ¿Estás seguro de que los diamantes están en esos juguetes? Es como una historia de piratas. Un mapa, un tuerto y un tesoro escondido. ¡Ah! El camino hacia el tesoro de esperanza. ¡Corre, corre! Se escapan. Así que este es tu juego, Esperanza. No importa lo difícil que lo pongas. ¿Qué, qué va a hacer con eso? Jugar. Jung were, Jung, I think the best way to think about Jung is that he was a student of two people. He was a student of Friedrich Nietzsche, and he was a student of Freud. And although the Freudians, when they write the history of psychoanalytic thought, they pretty much portray Jung as, a, as like a derivative thinker of Freud. Um, it's not the right way to think about his positioning historically, because in some ways what, what Jung was trying to do was to answer the question that Nietzsche posed at the end of the 19th century, and, it, because, and the reason Jung was trying to answer it was because he believed it was the most important question that had been posed at the end of the 19th century, and that was, you know, there's a famous quote by Nietzsche, right? I'm, I'm sure you've all heard it, and that's the quote that God is dead. So what Nietzsche said essentially was, God is dead and we have killed him. That's a different idea, and we'll never find enough water to wash away the blood. And so it wasn't like a triumphal statement on Nietzsche's part, even though when you hear it quoted, you always hear it quoted that way. It's like it's a sort of victory, God is dead, you know, or something to celebrate. It's not what Nietzsche thought at all. In fact, he thought all hell was going to break loose because of it. And he predicted as much in, like, in, the, in, the, in, like in the 1870s. I mean, he predicted what was going to happen in the 20th century with ri ridiculous accuracy. I strangely, in this book you referenced, The Mirror Effect, which I put out recently, I, was, it was, I wrote it a, almost a year ago, and I was equating the personality trends I was seeing in this country to what I've not documented in pre-revolutionary France. People have become very angry, very dysregulated, and they're losing capacity for empathy, so their points of view, they no alternative, and I'm telling you to hear people in our government talk about not being concerned when business executives who made a bad decision, families are threatened, I am beside myself. It's unbelievable that we're living in this time. And this U.S. Senator talking about encouraging people to kill themselves, why is there not unbelievable outrage? Yes, we're outraged at what's happened. Yes, this bailout's a horrible idea. Yes, these uh, bonuses are absolutely ridiculous. So they should kill themselves? That's where the guillotine got going, guys. That's where it got going. One of the things that differentiates the deaf psychologists from, say, behavior therapists 
and even from cognitive scientists, is that you might say in one way they're more mystical, which means more from the romantic tradition than the cognitive scientists and the behaviorists. So there's a temperamental split there, eh? because people who are high in openness, and both Freud and Jung were very, very high in trade openness, are very interested in the domain of the imagination and the domain of fantasy, because they have very active imaginations, and they have very active fantasy lives, and they're good visualizers. And so um, one of the things I've noticed in my clinical practice, that there's always been a joke about depth psychologists, that if you go see a Freudian, you have Freudian dreams, and if you go see a Jungian, you have Jungian dreams. And I suppose that means if you go to a behavior therapist that you don't have any dreams at all. <laughs> but I actually think there's some truth in that, because the more pragmatic people, the more practical people, are not going to be attracted to therapists who deal with issues that have to do, say, with the imagination and fantasy. Alex Gardner has a unique talent, and even he doesn't know what it can do. No one has ever done it before. No one has even conceived of doing it before. Going into another person's dream, you might have to see that to believe it. He is about to enter a world that no one has ever seen before. The world of your dreams. I was under the impression we were conducting scientific research here. You sound as if you don't approve. I can see you're going to be a real challenge to work with. Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. I haven't agreed to anything yet. There's somebody in my dreams. Who? An awful, ugly monster. This kid is being eaten alive and nobody gives a damn. Whatever his demon is, you have to help him face it. There's nobody there. Are you sure, Alex? He's always there. But Alex will make a discovery more frightening than any dream. What's going on? I had to let you know you're in danger. You want my secrets? I just want some advice. I'm afraid he has to be killed. I'm a science mentor. But I think I should deal with this on my own. And now, his only way out is to go back in to the dreamscape. Kate Capshaw, Dreamscape. When you close your eyes, the adventure begins. Did you know anything was going on? Oh my god! <laughs> you need to pull it together. I'm his father. I'm looking for answers. Are you really 18? I'm almost 18. Were you intimate with the boy? Absolutely not. What do you think the cops are going to question this guy? They can't do anything without concrete proof. I'm gonna find that guy myself. You ever mention anybody named Jessica? The FBI came to see me. The FBI? Are you kidding me? The house is gonna get raided. Give me your phone, Kyle. You're the one who exploits people. He harassed my son. I'm sorry. Get out of my sight! You follow me. You're stalking me told him everything about us. Do you have any idea what you've done? Trust me, no one else. Life, a miracle in the universe, appeared around four billion years ago. humans only 200,000 years ago. Yet we have succeeded in disrupting the balance that is so essential to life. In 50 years, in a single lifetime, 
the Earth has been more radically changed than by all previous generations of humanity. We know that the solutions are there today. We all have the power to change. So what are we waiting for? They can't do this to us. You might try just a little harder to understand our position. What would you do if I died, Dad? Would you cry? I don't think I'd ever stop. Siento como si tuviera un zoológico en mi estómago. Como si un montón de animales estuvieran corriendo por todo mi cuerpo. De la emoción que vamos a ir al otro lado. Yo siento que todo lo que miremos allá va a estar así bien tu ánido. Todo va a salir bien y vamos a llegar hasta donde queremos. Hola, Garay. Come on, I'm all today. Do 
folk till mig. Ser jag ut som en jävla puddel? Och klara att upp tre fosterhem på ett år, det är ganska gott gjort. Vi missar en mor. Visste? Det där har det varit fint att ha en hund eller nåt. Du valgar sig vad du gör eller vad som sker med dig. Du hoppar att du betrivs här, Thomas. Du kan självklart välja dig väck. Bara för att finna ut att det är någon andra som välger dig väck. Du känner att du inte kommer in i en tas nu. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies. These things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnarsson. Respected law enforcement professional, recently or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true? I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. Based on the information that's been given to me across the country by numerous survivors. Real playing is how real learning takes place. You can have conditioning, kind of Pavlovian conditioning of his dogs or behavior modifications through other means, which we look on as very serious and which we generally call learning. But it's not learning, it's conditioning. Real learning takes place by what Maria Montessori would call the absorbent mind of the child, simply absorbing their universe, absorbing it, becoming it, and they do this through play. Play can be the most serious undertaking. I am looking for someone to retrieve something for me, something for which I have searched for many long years. So he can go to hell, as well as all of the other leaders. Do you, uh, do you let think me tell I you, should go to Let me tell you something. We will, you, well, you're on your way to the hellfire because you're a non-Muslim. All non-Muslims, all non-Muslims are destined for the hellfire. I'll tell you how I'm feeling right now. I feel... Um, I feel completely alone. I feel like I'm completely gutted. I'm gutted that this is happening. I'm...
j'en ai vu et j'en vois des jeunes passer ici. On en réchappe quelques-uns et puis on se résigne à perdre les autres. La pire chose qu'on puisse faire à un enfant malade, c'est se croire ou le croire invincible. C'est pas parce qu'on aime quelqu'un qu'on peut le sauver. L'amour a rien à voir là-dedans. Malheureusement. All her life, Leanne Watson has done the right things. Her only ticket out of town is the one scholarship that goes to her school's top student. All she needs is an A in history. There's just one problem. The history teacher. Mrs. Tingle, she hates me. She hates everyone. She even hates me. Whenever I walk in the room, she's lying in wait, just ready to rip skin and draw blood. What is this? Oh, just Tingle's final exam. Tempting, isn't it? Slither away. Let's go. The smartest girl in school caught cheating. It'll be scandalous. We're going to be expelled. No graduation, no nothing. We'll just explain that you weren't involved. I'm innocent. Even the innocent sometimes burn at the stake. Now get out of my house. Not so fast. What do you think you're doing? You can't keep treating people the way you do. No. Don't be stupid. Put it down. You lose, Mr. Turner. Uh-oh. From Kevin Williamson. Mrs. Tingle. Oh, my God. We should give her mouth to mouth. I'm not going to do it. OK, a wicked film. Watch your head. Sorry. What do we do now? When she wakes up, we'll reason with her. Now, three friends. This is so Jerry Springer. In completely over their heads, have to find their way out of an impossible situation. What's the matter, Mrs. Tingle? Are you getting a little scared yourself? Oh, no, dear. Things are just starting to get fun. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgie, and Dim. And we sat in the Corova milk bar, trying to make up our razoo docs what to do with the evening. The Corova milk bar sold milk plus, which is what we were drinking. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultra-violence. Aggressive, young, bold, vicious. He'll do. Now it was lovely music that came to my aid. A bit of the old Ludwig van. Vidi well, little brother. Vidi well. Stop it! Stop it! Please, I beg you! Food! All right. Great, sir. Great. Try the wine. It was gorgeousness and gorgeosity made flesh. This is criminality, pure and simple, and it has to be confronted and defeated. Lions on a knife edge. Is chaos out there. These kids today, they can't be inspired. Like little rebels without a clue. And what we've robbed them of is their idealism. It only takes just uh, one incident to set off God knows what. Es ist zweitbeste Zeugnis aus der ganzen Klasse. Ja, dann das nächste Mal besser. Ich bin eigentlich nicht so politisch. Das ist für das Arschloch. Das Morgen ist ja alles weg. Ach man, glaubst du denn nicht, wäre eine gute Mutter? Es gibt ja nicht wirklich viel, was du richtig gut kannst. Wenn du mich nicht wieder mitnimmst, Erzähl ich meinem Vater, dass du mich an den Kopf schießt. 
Denkst du, du kannst dich einfach so durchschnauen? Ey, entspann dich doch mal. Verpiss dich, Mann, sie soll gehen. People than ever are embarking on risky sea crossings in search of a better life. These migrants from West Africa are taking the railroad to what they hope will be a better life. Um, so don't panic, guys. We've locked all the doors in our van. Um, and uh, but. Ah! city in the year 2022. Nothing runs anymore. Nothing works. But the people are the same. And the people will do anything to get what they need. This is the police. What they need most is Soylent Green. The supply of Soylent Green has been exhausted. Cuando tu mundo es diferente, When your world is different, la única salida es enfrentar lo que más odias. The only way out is confronting what you hate the most. Perdón por haberme enamorado de ti. Sorry for falling in love with you. I'm getting a very small radar cross section. 150 miles long. EGR is confirmed. Tell them we have an artificial object out here. In the tail of Haley's comet, there's something wrong. Something ancient, something evil. Jesus. Houston, we have a problem. Something's happening to me. Something hungry that's brought to Earth. She's destroyed worlds. That girl was no girl. She was totally alien to this planet and our life form, and totally dangerous. <laughs> Just found a body in Hyde Park. Life Force. Close your eyes.
visited you how? In my mind. Let him go! It's already spreading. You didn't stop it. It's too late. Come. Be with me. Life Force. The terror has just begun. It all starts in our family with our parents' criticism and violent rage, our siblings' jealousy. Then comes the pressure of school, our grades, our peer group. All in all, it's hard to conceive of growing up without it. Addicts, alcoholics, other compulsive addictive personalities suffer from it more than any other group. They've been damaged by it to the point of destruction and beyond. If violence is such, we, is such a powerful topic now, um, difficult to pick our way even through the conversation about it, we are really, as a society and a culture, fascinated, preoccupied with violence this, this past generation or so. I mean, we always have been to an extent, but the, the degree of tension around it is so high now. And not, not just violence in entertainment, but in the news, you know, the fact that if something terrible happens, as at Virginia mm -hmm. Tech, this, this is all we hear about for some time. Um, not passing judgment on that, but just noticing that our, our fascination for stories of violence is so powerful. And then even the amount of energy and time we spend talking about how to be less violent or how violence is bad is, is very high these days. So as you know, it, adults are fascinated with violence and kids know this. Um, the degree to which kids in school now are taught, you know, use your words, not your hands, don't fight. I mean, these are good messages, but there is a there is a pressure and there's a management of kids' passions and emotions that m previous generations didn't have. So kids now grow up understanding that this whole vast number of these topics called violence, which is everything from shoving a playmate to acts of, of you know, physical destruction of others, um, are a big deal. They know it's a big deal with us. And often what we fall into is we want to be obsessed with violence. We want to be talking to our kids about it in a sort of a nervous way, in a way that they often find frightening. But then we don't want them to play with it or fantasize about it or think about it. And it's, it's somewhat like what, how we were handling sexuality 100 years ago. It's this obsession with it on the one hand, but then a belief that kids somehow will not bring it into their minds or their games uh, if we act like it's not there for them. They become petrified. You could say that the masses are petrified like moving statues and the awakened ones are the ones who suddenly can flirt their eyelids and they believe that they've awoken up. And sometimes you f the, de the more you, you self-realize, the more you will become unpetrified yourself and you will comprehend how few are capable of doing that. And it fills you with a certain sense of loneliness. L loneliness of the petrified people is because they feel they cannot talk to anyone. But the spiritual loneliness is that you know. Thinking that our salvation lies in building more and more armaments, mm -hmm. and that exactly makes it impossible that we then can talk with other nations. Okay, so your advice to government leaders is? Not to build so many warheads. You've mm -hmm. got plenty already to mm -hmm. destroy the world a dozen times over. What do you think? I guess I kind of like it. Won't you miss the city? Nothing's permanent, right? <laughs> right. Love me, love me, love me, say. You do. Look at us. We're just like everyone else. We've bought into the same ridiculous delusion. Let me fly. This idea that you have to settle down or resign from life. With you. I want to feel things. Really feel them. A man only gets a couple of chances in life. It won't be long before he's sitting around wondering how he got to be second rate. We can't go on pretending that this is the life we wanted. I support you, don't I? 
to work 10 hours a day at a job I can't stand. You don't have to. But I have the backbone not to run away from my responsibilities. Who made these rules anyway? And while is a Because you got me safely in this little trap, you think you can bully me into feeling whatever you, you want me to feel. in a trap. Yes, you yes. in a trap. I hope so. I really hope so.